With my last move, BC1D2, I had anticipated my opponent's obvious break, but had not seen far enough. It transpires that the bishop needed to be on f4, when white was probably a bit better. d5 captures c4. Bishop e2 captures c4. c6 c5. After he played, c5, I sank into deep, desperate thought. My opponent had anticipated my planned reply to this break. d4 d5. e6 captures d5. Bishop c4 captures d5. Which gave him the chance to look deeper and see that. Knight d7 captures e5. Would give him a significant advantage. So. Instead I decided to complete my development with the aid of a tactical idea. In retrospect, it would have been better to fight for equality with d4 takes on c5. Knight d7 captures c5. Knight b3 captures c5. Bishop e7 captures c5. a5 a6. b7 b6. Rook a1 c1. When white is probably still sort of okay. Again it makes sense for Black to ask himself what White intended with his last move. It appears that taking twice on d4 and then e5 is not possible, as White can then play nx e6. With an advantage. Armed with this knowledge, my opponent looked for a flaw in my thinking, and found it. Rook a1 c1. Knight f5 captures d4. The main point is seen after. I now played. Bishop d2 c3. And managed to create some resistance before I blundered again later in the game. Knight b3 captures d4. c5 captures d4. Knight f3 captures d4. As said, black will not fall for. Knight d7 captures e5. Knight d4 takes on e6. When white has the advantage. Rook c8 takes on c4. Rook c1 captures c4. Bishop g6 d3. And the e5 pawn will be lost.
Rook h4 captures d4. King d5 captures d4. King d1 e2.